So today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite people and one of my favorite pieces of media. Just a fair warning that I'm going to be nerding out a bit. Hello and welcome back to the Miscellaneous channel where we do miscellaneous things. I'm Zeleni. Today we're going to be talking about pop music and specifically Lady Gaga's Born This Way album. This past May, Born This Way celebrated its 10th anniversary. It was released in May of 2011. Born This Way was the second major studio album of Lady Gaga. For this album, she really had all the budget she could ever want, all the resources, everyone wanted to work with her she was like fully mainstream at that point so there were no limits to what she could do with born this way and to this day it remains a career peak for her it released a lot of songs and visuals that made her extremely iconic and also really just solidified who she wanted to be so in this video i just wanted to go track by track on the born this way album as a celebration to its 10th anniversary and just sort of give my thoughts and review each song based on just my opinions and now looking back at it how i feel versus how i felt at the time um, i've been a lady gaga fan ever since the beginning since 2009 and i was hardcore during i mean i wasn't as hardcore as a lot of the little monsters but at the time i was like 15 or 16 and at the time i wasn't like too good at like honestly the internet or like finding the singles or like pop communities online at all so like i felt pretty like isolated in my fandom of lady gaga but i was obsessed and i had the cd and i just replayed it over and over as a teen in my room i had posters of born this way on my wall i had a whole lady gaga wall it's interesting because honestly it had been a minute since i really listened to born this way really consumed that era now that lady gaga is giving attention to it she is selling new merchandise she is releasing new covers like a new album sort of of born this way like covered by different artists she had this whole mural for born this way she's giving it a lot of attention and love right now and i'm glad because it shows how impactful it was a lot of people are remembering it celebrating it so i just wanted to be part of that and honestly i have fallen back in love with this album like i never felt out of love but i just hadn't listened to it in a long time or remembered a lot like deeper things about the song so i've just been playing it constantly in the past few days and weeks a lot of little monsters found my chromatica merch video and i hope some little monsters can find this and let me know your opinions below on these tracks what does the born this way album mean to you honestly i, I was in tears earlier listening to born this way because it's just so powerful. Let's just get into it. And I'm going to go in order of the extended version of the album. The album begins with Mary the Night. And this song is iconic. Um, am I going to say iconic five million times in this video? I might. But this album was really iconic. I'm sorry it was. But it's still one of my favorite songs on the album as of recording this this has been the latest cover she has released and the cover was by kylie minogue and everyone freaked out because they sort of tweeted it last minute as a surprise to fans that kylie minogue was going to cover mary the night it's so cool it's very disco-y and and pop and um, I'm glad she picked her for this song. So the whole Born This Way album, to me, listening to it again, I've been absorbing like the lyrics a lot more and trying to think what Gaga was intending with each song and the album as a whole. As a whole, the album feels very much like it is about freedom and rebellion and taking control of your life. To me, the whole Born This Way album is all about freedom. And that's sort of what Mary the Night is a good example of encompassing that theme. Like, I could do a whole fucking video on Mary the Night because the music video is a masterpiece. I remember watching it as a teen, the night it premiered, and it was long. Like, Lady Gaga music videos sometimes were long, like above 10 minutes, and that at the time felt crazy. Like, it's so long but she would have like whole stories and almost like short film type 
um, elements in her videos. As far as Mary the Night goes, Mary the Night is a very freeing song. Even like singing along to it is one of those that you can just like free yourself yelling to it. Like, I'm not gonna cry anymore, I'm gonna marry the night. It's just kind of about empowering yourself to get what you want and being free to do so. When we get to the video, so the whole story, and we've recently, very recently gotten clarity even further about a particular big chunk of the video. And this video, looking at it now, and I'm sure this is common knowledge, but I hadn't like observed it this close in a long time, since I was 15 probably. If you're curious about Lady Gaga, right before she was famous and the story of how she got famous or got success in the music industry. Mary the Knight tells her whole story in an abstract and artistic way and at the beginning she starts off narrating how she likes to remember things in an artistic way and make an art piece out of real events. So it's safe to assume that Everything that happens in the Mary the Night video is based on her true life. Lady Gaga very recently revealed that she was sexually abused at 19 and left pregnant from that encounter, which she proceeded to have an abortion afterwards. It brought a lot of confirmation and clarity that the fans suspected but weren't sure of. Sure enough, the Mary the Night video uh, contains this scene where she is in a hospital room and it's a very like fashion depiction of this but the root of it shows that this is likely an interpretation of when she got her abortion and what she says to the nurse is that she's going to be a star because she has nothing left to lose. So that is depicted in the Mary the Night video and also all the other events she has spoken about in interviews that preceded her becoming famous. So for example, in the video we see her at dance practice. We see her hauling the piano up and down her apartment in New York. She's talked a lot about how she was always hauling her piano up the steps. The video shows sort of a grungy, very small studio apartment, likely something reminiscent of where she lived. The video shows her bleaching her hair, which I think was an important decision that made her Lady Gaga. We know her with bleached hair. That was an important change preceding her becoming successful. We see a lot of depictions of ballet, which Lady Gaga was classically trained at some sort of like performing arts school. The video shows her leaving that place, so maybe it depicts her dropping out of performing arts school to pursue her dreams. The video shows an important moment too where she has a phone call and she is like crying and upset and I remember even back when I was 15 watching this, I remember knowing that that was a reference to when she got dropped by her original record label. Lady Gaga had this very important moment early on in her career before she became famous where her label dropped her in a very jarring and traumatic way. In the video we see glimpses of maybe an eating disorder which Lady Gaga has talked about um, having issues with that. This video really shows that we're just like the events that led up to her becoming huge. The reason I know this is what this video is about, at the very end we see her hand has a written note on it and it says, meeting with Interscope 4 p.m. Interscope is the label that she ended up releasing the fame with. And I believe it's the, it's the record label she is still under to this day. The song just goes along with that perfectly. It's all about freedom and pursuing that. I think that's enough about Mary in the Night. Sorry, I went on a long tangent there, but that one is a long video and I think it, it shows Lady Gaga's sort of life story be before she became really famous. So next we have Born This Way, which is the most famous song on the album, the titular track, the song that the whole album is named after. She says it best in the music video at the beginning when she narrates. She says, this is a manifesto of the mother monster. Born This Way is obviously the most important song on the album, probably the song that Gaga is going to be known for for the rest of her career. It's her manifesto to the world about what she is about. The video has a lot of like 
goo resembling placenta in an artistic way, obviously. It has a lot of like birthing, weird, creepy alien effects. And it's very 80s. So the song Born This Way is very 80s inspired. At the time, 15 years ago, it was uh, accused of being a ripoff of Vogue by Madonna, which it does sound similar to. It's interesting because nowadays, I don't think anyone remembers that part, but that, that everyone was like complaining and accusing Gaga of being a copycat. Honestly, it's so much easier to be a little monster now than it was back then. Back then it was like, so like everyone was trolling her like the mainstream public really didn't take her seriously and took her weirdness just to be about shock factor and about being scandalous or sacrilegious or whatever you look back at it everything she ever did was very intentional very much had a reason behind it had an artistic meaning for the most part. So Born This Way really is this anthem for everyone that feels different, feels outcasted, and obviously it had a huge impact for the LGBTQ plus community. At the time, the fight for just the right to marry was a huge fight and not even too close from happening. She wasn't the only one the weird kids had, but she was one of the few that was just unapologetically an ally to the LGBTQ plus community and also just anyone that felt like an outcast, people with disabilities. She even mentions it in the song. Literally a song for anyone who doesn't feel like they belong to feel like they belong. And it's very much the culture she has at her shows. She reiterates it and screams it at us. It's just when you look at all of her contemporaries, which Kesha, Taylor Swift, who is the exact same age as Lady Gaga, we had Katy Perry, we had Rihanna. I would say those were the biggest pop girls of the time. I know I'm gonna sound shady, whatever. <laughs> I love all of those artists, honestly, and I've loved songs of theirs and whatever, but the reason I stand Lady Gaga is because, I don't know, it just felt like she was singing about larger concepts and for a lot of the others a lot of it was about love and sex um, and Lady Gaga wrote about those things too but also wrote about freedom and expression and feminism and just had whole stories and her whole concepts with her songs so I don't know I just feel like looking back Lady Gaga really was one of a kind in what she was doing. She very much had in mind that she was sort of speaking and representing a lot of us freaks and weird kids out there. So Born This Way was like the epitome of an anthem for the people. <laughs> Next track three, we have Government Hooker. This one, I think at 15, I was a little like confused by i mean i still am not like when i was 15 i was probably a little scandalized by it and th it has like a really cool like techno beat that i'm really appreciating now more than i was back then back then i think maybe i found it a little odd or jarring this one almost feels also maybe like about kink i swear as we go through this album you'll see that lady gaga straight up represents every <laughs> everyone i feel like government hooker might speak a little bit to like kink culture it, it's kind of inviting role play and things like that so this one represents her sexual side then we have judas another highlight of the album it was a single it was dropped on easter sunday and <laughs> lady gaga is actually a very catholic religious woman but she was definitely getting in some controversy throughout this album she references god and jesus a lot even in born this way but anyway so judas was very scandalous at the time that it was released uh people were saying it was sacrilegious you know she's talking about wanting to have sex with judas but it's definitely deeper than that i want to say the judas music video is another masterpiece honestly it's just so uh Looking back at it, it's like the pop girls don't do it like this anymore. Like, I swear. It's like a whole story of like Lady Gaga basically playing Mary Magdalene, if you're familiar with Bible stories. 
with Jesus, a very hot Jesus <laughs> in this video. She feels like the temptation or the whatever of Judas, who is like the bad boy. This song just has like an amazing, memorable beat. The Judas beat hits so hard. And the choreo is something I still to this day is the choreo I remember the most from Gaga videos. Like that, Bad, Bad Romance and Judas are the choreos I can sort of remember when it's played. So next we have Americano, which I think is a, it's a sort of deep cut of Gaga's. Like not a lot of people know it. Like especially people that know her mainstream work don't might not know this song. For me as a 15 year old Mexican girl, I was like, Oh my god, I'm represented. So like I said, she's representing everybody. She represented hookers and kinks. She represented Catholics <laughs> and bad boys. And now she represented Hispanics, which I was just like, ah, like freaking out. In this song, she does speak Spanish. It, the accent's all off. The grammar is not correct. But... <laughs> I just felt so good to have my culture represented. And on top of it, Americano is sort of, seems to be about some sort of like a lesbian or woman to woman relationship. I believe it's a lesbian relationship. That's how I interpret it. I don't speak your language, oh no. Like, hello, I love that. <laughs> and it's kind of about fighting for that love, presuming between the two women, and one is Gaga, one is the Hispanic girl, I think. She's talking about like, fantasizing about getting married, all these things, and it, it's a really sweet song and story. The whole album seems to like focus a lot on the fight between like authority and conservatism and rebelling against that, and all you can find that common theme throughout a lot of it, even just like government hooker, like two words that don't seem to go together but finding how they do and how that tension is. I, I feel like I'm talking very abstract, but I hope it makes sense. Like, it is a lot about rebellion. This Americano song is also about, like, rebelling against authority. She also says, don't you try to catch me. I'm living on the edge of the law. It's very much about, like, a taboo romance, presumably a lesbian relationship that is not approved of and i do think in the course she says i don't speak your language um she sort of means like the language of the law if that makes sense it doesn't mean english or spanish but i really loved the song back when i was 15. i didn't read that much into the message back then but i was like felt so good to be represented and have her speak spanish even if it was like broken it, it mattered so much that she did so next we have track number six, and that is Hair. Hair was a single, I remember. This song had a huge impact on me and really resonated with me. If we're talking about who this song represents, it feels like it represents anybody who uses aesthetics or drag, for lack of a better word, as a form of self-expression. Especially when you're younger, your parents fight you on wanting to have the hair color you want or the hairstyle you want or the makeup you want to wear, the clothes you want to wear. So this song is all about that. And to me, even back then it was so impactful because I have always, <laughs> my mom has always been very, very restrictive and anti me expressing my fashion in the way I want. For example, she really hates that I dye my hair like unnatural colors. Still to this day, the song has the same meaning, has the same importance of self-expression. Like I am very pro body modification, pro looking weird and different. So this song just sort of speaks to that and is still so meaningful to me today. The main lyrics are it is, I've had enough, this is my prayer, that I'll die living as free as my hair. And that's still one of my favorite lyrics and one that I just resonate a lot with. As like superficial as it sounds, hair and your body and makeup and nails, all of this is like very important. Next we have track number seven and that is Shiza. Shiza is still to this day my favorite song on the album. This song is amazing. Like the beat of it is just like... Oh, everything I love in a pop song. Pop perfection for my own taste. And then that being said, the lyrics to it are super deep and meaningful and it's really a very 
nuanced and strong feminist anthem. She does a lot in German for this song, which whatever. I imagine it's also maybe grammatically questionable based on how the Spanish was. I don't care much for that spoken part, but it does get me hype for, because I know it's coming. It's one of my favorite Gaga songs ever, actually. It's a very feminist and empowering song, yet it captures the nuance of I'm a strong woman, I don't need permission. But also in the lyrics, she talks about her weak moments and how she wishes she could be strong without all the shit she's been through. And Scheiße, the title of the song, is means shit in German. But she says, I wish I could be strong without the Scheiße. To me, that's like such a powerful message. It's not just about feminism. It's almost like the hardships of being a woman. Those hardships are what make us strong. I wish I could be strong without somebody there. Sort of pining to be strong, be a strong, empowered woman, but having to deal with so much shit or having dealt with so much shit in your life, making it more difficult than it seems. So this song to me is just so powerful and such a bop musically. Like, if it wasn't saying anything, it would still be a bop. Next we have track eight and that's Bloody Mary. Um, this one is creepy. I remember liking it <laughs> when I was 15 and I had it on my sleep playlist on my iPod. This continues the religious sort of undertones and themes that she brought in this album. I think this album was really also very much inspired by Gaga's life in general. She grew up very Catholic. This one I'm not totally, I'm not totally sold on what it's about. It seems to be kind of a a love song, a Gaga love song, which is very metaphorical and uh, over the top. I won't cry for you. I won't crucify the things you do. So maybe this song is about forgiveness, how she's sort of taking on this role of mother and taking all the heat for us. Maybe not. <laughs> So next we have Black Jesus, Amen Fashion, which this song was an extra track on the extended edition. I appreciate the representation. It is definitely more likely that Jesus was black, uh, more likely than him being white. I like that she is promoting that. This song is very much just a runway song, honestly, and it has that kind of beat for the runway. So next, number 10 is Bad Kids, which uh, this song, this here it is, representing the bad kids. And this song is sort of about the problem child and owning being a problem child. I think the underlying theme is that a bad kid is probably a bad kid for a reason and maybe like a trauma reason. Gaga's willing to accept them. Um, as they are. And it's very clear in the lyrics. It's just like, as long as your heart is pure, she'll accept you. It's very much like an empowering song for young people, young people that maybe are failed by their systems. And now she's releasing like a makeup collection after the song. I don't know why she chose this song for it. Next we have Fashion of His Love, which is a song I hadn't revisited in a long time. This one is a very cute song. This is as close as like a pure like love song that she gets. It's not a, a love with conflicts. It's just like a pure, honestly this song, it's a very optimistic love song, I should say. And this song gives me major wedding vibes. And also this song, which I find interesting now, has foreshadowing to Chromatica. The chorus says, I'm seeing all the signs from above. Signs from above. Now I really want to make a mashup of Sign from Above and Fashion of His Love. That'd be cute. And I find it sweet. Like, honestly, I'm liking it a lot now. Back then, I didn't listen to the bonus tracks that much because I think I only got the, the regular CD. That was all that was on my iPod. <laughs> so next, number 12, is Highway Unicorn Road to Love. And this was 15-year-old me's favorite, aside from Shiza. Back when I was 15, this song really got me and I was obsessed with it. It's just so grand. It's very gay. It's very, my rainbow heart bleeds. <laughs> this one is sort of finding solidarity in your community and your weird people that you relate with. This song to me feels like total freedom. It's very much has imagery of riding a car fast, riding a unicorn fast. <laughs> like a rugged freedom. We're on the move chasing our dreams. 
She's got rainbow syrup in her heart that she bleeds. Like that line, really, I, I felt that. I felt it. Like, they don't care if your papers or your love is the law. There you go. That's representation for undocumented people. Okay, next is track number 13. And this one is one that I have more recently become obsessed with. And back in the day, I was not so obsessed with it. It was, it's called Heavy Metal Lover. Back then, I underestimated it. It's more of an instrumental heavy song. It's not so lyrical. But there is one lyric that has been haunting me all week. Sometimes just like a lyric will make me so inspired to make all different kinds of things. Like it just makes me want to create with crafts or with music or with videos. It's all fun and games for most of the song and it's like very like sexy. I want your whiskey mouth on my blonde south. <laughs> but then there's one part where she says I could be your girl but would you love me if I ruled the world? And it's a very interesting concept that Gaga has talked about in like her documentaries and stuff and it's just kind of about how she has had trouble in her relationships with her amount of success and power intimidating a lot of men. I just find this this lyric to be so powerful and like, ugh. It's a, I don't know, it gets me. It's kind of like that Lana Del Rey song that's like, would you still love me if I was no longer young and beautiful? It's kind of like that, but this one is more about power, I don't know. <laughs> so next we have Electric Chapel, which again continues the religious themes. This name in hindsight of a song is like, it's so cool. <laughs> And I think Electric Chapel is sort of about having a safe place, a safe space. I don't have too many thoughts. I am appreciating, similarly to Heavy Metal Lover, I'm appreciating the instrumentals of this song a lot. How just like innovative it was. Like, I don't know. I didn't appreciate this album when it was out. It's just like so innovative. The next 15, we have the final bonus track, which is The Queen. It does have like some church bells at the beginning so I think that's why it gives me wedding vibes <laughs> again I feel like a lot of these bonus tracks are very overt and not subtle the way the rest of the album is so I see why they were cut out I guess they're a little more just like straightforward we're saying what we mean with the lyrics it's also sort of committing to us the little monsters the people the outcasts that she is gonna she is willing to be our queen she is stepping up to be that for us and i can be the queen you need me to be thank you gaga for being the queen we needed because we did i did <laughs> next we have the final two tracks which are both very iconic they were both singles at number 16 we have you and i you and i was honestly kind of interesting like foreshadowing to joanne almost the music video is very very cool she's representing the midwest with this song she talks a lot about nebraska in it like even the midwest gets represented in this album you and i is very much one of like this the bigger type stories of these i believe inspired by her own life and a man she met in nebraska or liked or loved in nebraska honestly the plot of you and i this song is kind of the plot of every lifetime christmas movie it's like the girl from the city who is successful and sophisticated comes back to the rural hometown to fall in love with the basic guy she used to like or whatever <laughs> and that's what the lyrics talk about it's about a guy let's go back to the bar kind of nostalgic love story as far as the video goes it's very cool very it's like takes place in all these cornfields and she's like a mermaid and it's kind of like the guys in love with the mermaid but then there's like another plot line where herself as a woman and as a man are canoodling and i don't know how they did the special effects to for Gaga as a man grabbing Gaga as a woman. <laughs> um, but again, drag king representation in this video. And Gaga honestly did a great job as Joe Calderon. That's her boy name. <laughs> she went to an award show as him. I was like definitely attracted to Joe Calderon. And I remember being teased for that. Because people are homophobic. <laughs> the final track we have is The Edge of Glory. It's 
less of a story but it is a, a concept that isn't covered a lot in pop music this whole song is very clearly about death she was inspired by i believe her grandfather passing away around the time it's very much like a very optimistic and positive view on death or just like a very sweet and uplifting view of death i'm on the edge with you she's referring to someone that is passing and she is there to support there's a lot of lyrics that sort of make that clear but that's what she means by the edge this is a known thing it's not me making up stuff there's one part specifically that may be a little dark to think about but she says put on your shades because i'll be dancing in the flames tonight so it's kind of about cremation specifically another shot before we kiss the other side it's a very celebratory way to look at death and a very good and healthy way to think about it just sort of on the edge of freedom on the edge of glory to pass on and hopefully not suffer in life the video is pretty simple as far as her videos go i still love the fashion in this video it is pure versace it's also a very grand song in the instrumental it has a saxophone adds this like jazzy element to it very cool so those are all the tracks on born this way and those are all my thoughts i did buy the born this way merch at urban outfitters as well as the new reimagined album already which ships later um but i'm wearing my monster ball tour of 2011 at least it's the same year this is the tour i saw her at for the first time and truly fell in love with her and this tour really changed my life but i have fallen back in love and just every song has such interesting imagery and concepts like i just remember Katy perry songs and i remember taylor swift songs and they were all just very like oh california and boys and you broke my heart <laughs> the world needed those songs too but just i'm so proud to be a little monster and just see that her stuff has held up so well for example in a judas lyric she says in, in a cultural sense i speak in future tense like that sums it up she was speaking like ahead of her time in her preaching of freedom like back then the pop stars weren't, weren't as clear allies to the lgbt community at best they were like putting them in music videos or working with them behind the scenes and at the worst they were very much tailoring all of their stuff to very conservative people and not speaking out about anything um until 2019. <laughs> gaga was very purposely advocating for lgbtq plus anyone who was different people with disabilities hispanics people with kinks lesbians drag kings <laughs> people from nebraska she was just represented for everyone that felt othered and this album is such a masterpiece of anthems and messages of expressing yourself and being yourself i think my top songs to this day shiza judas Mary the Night, Heavy Metal Lover is sneaking its way up there, and Hair. Hair is still one of my most personally important ones. Those are my top songs on Born This Way. Those are my thoughts on each song. I would love to know if you're a little monster, if you have favorites from Born This Way or any memories of that time. If you're not a little monster and have for some reason watched this whole video, I hope you learned some interesting things about Lady Gaga and Born This Way. Feel free to comment below if you have any favorite singles or tracks or albums of Lady Gaga. Um, I love Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed. I put out new videos once to twice a week, generally talking about pop music, pop culture, and other miscellaneous things. You can also follow me at miscellaneous on Instagram or Twitter to find out about new videos or just turn on the bell notification here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!